A Native American storyteller impacts American social history. The Hollywood screenwriter who brought her story to the big screen is with us tonight. I'm Richard. And I'm Gary. And these are our incredible stories. Hello and welcome back to all of our listeners from around the world and across the United States. We're happy to have you back with us again for some more incredible stories. And if you happen to be joining us for the first time, well, welcome. Go ahead, grab yourself a seat, get yourself comfortable because you're in for a treat. We have some incredible stories to share with you today. And uh, you know what? Uh, Why don't you go ahead and tell us a little bit more about... uh, what incredible story we have to offer. Ooh, incredible, all spelled in capital letters, Gary. Um, there's a new film out on Netflix, and you and I just watched it this weekend. Yes, we did. It was very weekend. good. Um, and it's titled Te Ata. That's an unusual title, isn't it? It is. Never heard of that before. Uh, but it turns out it's the true story of a Native American storyteller um, who created a, a new level of empathy and understanding of... Uh, Native Americans in this uh, country. Now, the opening credits, I noticed, list someone by the name of Esther Luttrell as both story by um, and screenwriter. We are very fortunate to have with us this evening the screenwriter and story by person, Esther Luttrell. Welcome, Esther. Thank you. Really an honor to be here. Love well, your show. It is an honor Thank you. to have you because uh, we know uh, what kind of incredible person you are. You've got uh, lots of uh, great Hollywood stories, and we're going to be sharing some of those um, in future episodes. Uh, so, uh, Gary, uh, anyways, uh, Esther was uh, the screenwriter, as I mentioned, and the story by. Um, uh, Esther, I'm going to ask you how you... Uh, how it came about that you uh, became the screenwriter, but also uh, what's the difference between story by and screenwriter? What's the difference between story by and screenwriter? Was that the question? Yes, yes. Yeah. Story by. I have no idea. I think that's uh, probably, because there's uh, Writers Guild of America doesn't really have a category like that. That's just kind of a courtesy that they put on the screen. It's whoever dreams up the story. Because Jeannie, whose uh, name is up there with me on that one, um, was the historian. She was, I think, something, I think she said she was 16 Chickasaw, which made her real Chickasaw. But she's also very involved in the nation itself and very involved in the uh, incredible uh, art center they have. Go- it goes over many acres in Oklahoma. She's all involved in that. She worked for the governor, not the governor of the nation, the governor of Oklahoma for something like 12 years. And so she's sort of a liaison between the governor and uh, the nation. The governor, by the fact, as a matter of fact, Toyota was his pet project, and this was something he wanted to push through. Jeannie had dreamed up a story, and it didn't work. God love her. So then I was called in, and my I didn't have an idea. I never heard of Toyota, so I didn't have an idea for the story until I did some research on her. And the story, as all good stories do, told itself. I mm. just simply was was the vessel it came through. The story was already there. It was just waiting to be told. And uh, so that's what story by is. It's whoever comes up with the core of the story that ends up being a screenplay. Okay. And Boy, the... that's a long-winded answer. <laughs> I apologize. That's all right. And, and as the screenwriter, you wrote uh, the dialogue, correct? I think the narrative is more important than the dialogue because the characters speak in your mind and you just write down what you hear them say. You're not really creating it yourself. What you're creating is you go an image in your mind and you try to do a freeze frame and hold it in your mind and then describe it as best you can so that a crew who can make this a reality, so the crew knows what they need to do in order to put that scene on the screen. And that's really all the screenplay is. It's a set. It's a user's manual for a crew. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's that's not a good way creative. Of it. mm-hmm. it's, 
your treatment is is all that's creating, but no one sees that. That's the core of your story. So we have a little bit of insight into the craft of movie making. Yeah. Now uh, it is a craft. Yeah, it is yeah. a craft. It now, is. The uh, the movie Teata is actually about a person whose name was Mary Frances Thompson, and she was born. Oh, she was born before I was. She was born in eighteen ninety five. Eighteen ninety five. Yeah. Uh-huh. But yeah. but uh, she lived uh, to um, uh, just a few months short of one hundred because she didn't pass away until nineteen ninety five. Uh, so I mean, wasn't she just weeks away even from yeah, being under? Weeks, yeah, weeks. Weeks away. She was. She was in a um, nursing home, but. She was still doing public speaking up to about six months before her death. Oh, wow. Uh, just picture Catherine Hepburn, <laughs> what mm-hmm. I keep saying, because I, I saw that personality all the way through, which you didn't see on the screen because the, uh, the director had a different interpretation of her personality. But he didn't. He came in it, just no more than a couple of weeks before they started filming. I'd had 18 months of reading her diaries and her mother's diaries and Clyde Fisher, her husband's diaries and their letters to each other. So I felt like I knew her better. It doesn't really matter. The message, her point, her purpose, Mm -hmm. that comes across. Exactly. She did get that across no matter what her actual personality was. So for our listeners who uh, were pretty much like me before we had this discussion, who was this person? Well, her mother was German. In fact, her mother, when uh, she met the man she ended up marrying, took him home to meet her mother. Her mother wouldn't speak to her. You're not bringing an end down into this family. I'm not going to talk to you. She didn't talk to her for months. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, well, you know, German family and, and American Indians weren't looking up on, you know, with, with a lot of prestige at that time. Uh, you know, we're talking, what, 1890s. And so she didn't know a lot about American Indians. And she came to respect him enormously and to adore him as, you know, life went on. So by the time Tayata was born, she didn't know anything about conflict. Uh, not only did she look as much German as she did Indian. Um, Her father wanted them to respect and wanted his children to be raised more traditionally as American Indians. But you have to remember, the Chickasaw Indians were enormously successful financially in agriculture and, I believe, in banking uh, before they ever settled in Oklahoma. They were in the South, I forget where, Tennessee or somewhere. And, and uh, they had a marvelous educational system, uh, very, very sophisticated. So that's what Mary Frances was born into. Mm-hmm. She didn't, uh, the, the, the conflict, except for one, for one conflict, which they chose not to depict in the film, and I respect that. But it didn't affect her personally. She had a great education. She had a loving family. It was uh, very westernized by that time. But when she heard the stories of of the Chickasaw, the nobility, the spirit, the spirituality, then she vowed to herself that will not be lost, even though by then the government had made every effort to completely westernize. The American Indian Nation. How did she, she? She vowed that she would tell the stories. Mm-hmm. How did she um, get the name Teata? Her grandmother. In fact, uh, when well, you saw that in the movie, but uh, when she had an opportunity to tour with a traveling, like sideshow kind of Chautauqua. <laughs> but it was like Chautauqua. I love the concept of Chautauqua. You remember Chautauqua? Well, no. <laughs> yeah, but when she had an opportunity to travel with them, she said, uh, he said, the, the man who was head of this, he said, you know, we can't call you Mary Frances and have you do an Indian show. 
you've got to come up with a name. And so she asked her mother, you know, well, what's an Indian name I could use, Mom, that has meaning? And then she said, well, what is it my mom used to call you? And she said, we should call me Tayata. And uh, so you had to remember that that's the grandmother that didn't want anything to do with Indians. But it meant bearer of the morning. And Tayata liked the sound of that. So she used that name and that became so, the name she was known by, not by her family, but to the public. Mary Frances Thompson became Tayata in public. That was her yeah. stage name. Right. Let's uh, jump back to the movie now. Um, there are some ceremonial scenes in the movie. Are the stories that sh- the actress tells in the movie, are they the real stories that Teata told? You know, I'm so glad you asked that, because I read a review day before yesterday that, you know, you, you wish I had somebody you could respond to a review. The reviews were uniformly good. Except for the last one I read, which called it inaccurate. And that hurt because I can guarantee you, I promise Richard and Gary, I promise you, every word in there, every word came from either a letter or a diary passage from Tayada, Clyde, her mother. It came, every word is true. Every word is accurate. I didn't even reword in most cases. What I did was try to blend them in so that they all connected together to make one story. Mm-hmm. I, I, so yes, every word, every word, and every situation is true. I, I got that. I got that impression, uh, Esther. Uh, I know how Hollywood can uh, base something on a true story, and away it goes, and get some distance between the truth and the uh, entertainment. But this one, this one had the feel of. Real authentic, uh, authenticity. Real. This was real history on the screen. When for that, you can thank Paul Sermons. When Paul uh, called and asked me if I'd write the screenplay, gosh, I'd been here in Topeka for, uh, I don't know, seven or eight years at that point. And I thought anything to do with Hollywood was well behind me. So when the phone rings at 10 o'clock at night and I'm sitting here and I scrubby house shoes. I got a cat on my lap. Phone rings, and it's Paul. And he said, uh, can I talk you into writing one more screenplay? And I said, no. <laughs> he said, no, no, truly, just one more. I said, no, I don't respect Hollywood. I don't respect what they're doing. No, 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 I don't want to. Uh-uh. And he said, all right, this is why I'm asking you, because it's a true story. And I said, no, stop right there. You know what Hollywood does with true stories. Mm -hmm. If three words Uh get on the screen, it's true. That's a miracle. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not going to spend all that time researching, pouring my heart and soul into trying to recreate a period that we want people to know about. We want integrity in it. And then, boom, it comes up to some stupid thing on the screen. I don't even recognize. No, 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 no. So he said, but that's why I'm calling you and not somebody in Hollywood. Because I know you won't give it a Hollywood spin, and I'll protect it. I won't let them do that. No. So he said, all right, do this for me. Go to Google and look up Teata, T-E-A-T-A. Just look it up. Read about her. I'll call you tomorrow. If you still feel the same way, I'll respect what you say. So, of course, I looked her up. I fell in love with her. He called me tomorrow, and I said, when do we begin? (laughs) (laughs) Mm-hmm. That's how things uh, sometimes happen. And, you know, he he was uh, very faithful to his word uh, to you because as I watched that uh, movie, it seemed to me like the hairstyles were accurate. Certainly the costumes appeared to be accurate. Oh, uh, Paul is meticulous. Paul is meticulous. And I have to say, Frank, too, meticulous about it. And, and Jeannie, she's a historian, and she led everybody down the right path with you know, let's. You know what kills me when I see, golly, watch an old western on TV. Mm-hmm. You know, even uh, Gunsmoke or Wagon Train or something. Here's a woman out on the prairie. She's got her hair bleached and she's got on her false eyelashes and she's just come through an Indian War or something. <laughs> and man, she's got her eyeshadow just perfect because she just woke up and her lipstick isn't smudged. 
makes me crazy. Makes me crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tell me the story. Show me. Teach me something about an era. If you're going to take me back to those days, I want to be there. Absolutely. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the director and producer uh, also, uh, Gary. Uh, they uh, they went to the extreme on realism with their casting, too. Uh, at the end credits, it said that uh, 200 uh, Chickasha folks were cast in the movie. Oh, wow. Yes. You know what I think is remarkable? If you went to the website, the IMDb website, and you saw the picture of the young man that played Clyde, uh, his name was uh, Mackenzie Aston. Mm-hmm. He's, he doesn't he, look anything in, in real life. Nothing. He doesn't look like Clyde Fisher. They were so meticulous about recreating his look. Uh, it, it was just fantastic. And uh, I, I thought everybody did. The only one that that made me kind of nuts was uh, the wonderful actress who played Eleanor Roosevelt because she, I'm old enough to remember what Eleanor <laughs> Roosevelt looked yeah. like. And that ain't it. <laughs> Gary, <laughs> Gary mentioned that to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, was, that yeah. was one thing that I, I said, well, I don't know if she really looks like Eleanor. No. But, well, why, uh, why do they? Yeah, well, they figured that none of us really remember. No, sorry. Nobody watching will really remember what Eleanor looks like. But I remember. I did. <laughs> she was a very good actress. So yeah. every, I thought all of the actors, Graham Greene uh, got many, many. At first, it went out the film festival route. And he, he just kept picking up all kinds of awards. Even Best Greenplay, God love him. But Graham Greene just kept picking up awards uh, for his role in there as uh, Toyota's uncle, who was the governor. Now, he he also was not full-blooded uh, Chickasaw. He was a full-blooded Indian. And uh, yet he was so beloved for his incredible intelligence, for his humanity, he was Tayada's daddy's brother. And at first they just owned a general store together. And then, as the show, I think I picked a bit, um, because he had broader vision than just a general store, he really wanted to protect the Chickasaw. Then he became their governor. It was funny, when I got off the plane, Uh, in Oklahoma City, and somebody from the studio picked me up. Before they took me to the hotel, they said, uh, the girl, my driver, said, uh, I want to, we're going to be passing by the building that is the Chickasaw Capitol building still. But I want to show you because it's where the governor, Teodis' uncle, was inaugurated. So she takes me to this building that you do see in the movie, and here's the big lawn in front. And I saw, I didn't know anything. I hadn't started my research yet. I just knew about Tayata, but I didn't know the backstory. And I saw a scene of him being inaugurated out on the grounds, and Tayata being a little girl sitting on her daddy's shoulders, watching her uncle being uh, inaugurated. And I said, oh my gosh, I was just given a picture of of one of our first scenes. Oh, wow. And of course, it, it is, they were able to bring it on the screen ex- exactly as I envisioned it that day. There has to, just to be something a little, a of, little spiritual about experiences like that. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, you know, one of the uh, scenes, um, Esther, that really had a, a major impact on me, in fact, I started tearing up a little bit, This is the scene where um, she comes rowing across the river in a canoe to the children waiting for her on the other side at the Uh, camp. Oh, my gosh. Is that an incredible scene or what? I got a little static about that one because uh, they had to go find a canoe and had to find just the right place and everything. But I saw it so clearly. And unfortunately, Paul, he seemed to understand everything that I would write and he would call and he'd say for instance there's a scene where they're at the dinner table in the uncle's home and and I I got to go there and sit at that table and visit with the people who it's it's now a place you can tour but there's a wonderful lady and I think it's your son who run the place and live there anyway um, I think one of the most, one of the things that I thought was the most exciting about that whole thing was 
not only the scene where Tiana comes and sees the children around that bin and they see her, but Tiana, after she would have dinner with all the relatives there, she radically lived there, um, they would say, come on, Tiana, or Mary Frances, come on, Mary Frances, tell us one of your stories. And that's where everything really began for her, was telling the story to the family after dinner. And so when sitting in, at that house or sitting on the front porch, I could visualize her out on the lawn telling these stories that later became a part of her her mission. And it was a mission. Um, I've got a question for you, though, personally. Um the real person in real life, her name was Muriel Wright, and she was the teacher that really inspired uh, Mary Frances. Do you recall? I wonder. Uh, there, she had. There were she two was a, teachers, but one in particular. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and the one in the movie I'm thinking of uh, told her to go down to the theater room that she was definitely going to take a course uh, during her oh, sixth yeah. period yeah. or what have you. Yeah. Do you did you see a little bit of yourself in that teacher? You know what? I think this is why I understood Tayada so well. Not only, there are lines in there. There are lines. There's one after she saw the cartoon at the movie theater with Clyde, and then they went out in the alley because she was crying. And she said, you know, who do I think I am that I thought I could change everybody? I thought I could make them. There are lines in there my friends during screenings have said, that sounds like you. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I said, no, I promise I read it in one of her letters, but when I read things that she would say, I think that's stuff I say all the time, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I felt a very kindred spirit with her her attitude. And she had a very sharp tongue. She had a very wicked tongue. She had a sharp, barbed sense of humor, which Clyde appreciated. And they didn't bring that over in the film. I kind of wish they had, but they wanted to keep her softer mm -hmm. than, than she, she there was nothing wrinkly nosed about her you know mm -hmm. sure well that teacher that we're, <laughs> we're talking about oh uh, the teacher yeah. one, one of the okay. one of the lines that stuck out for me was what can you offer what can you offer to, to me that's mm -hmm. speaking to the audience mm -hmm. too mm -hmm. yeah i read that in one of the letters um you have to remember, there had never been an Indian in that school that she went to. And I gather this from her letters to her mom and her mom's letters to Tayada. What I got from it, if you just read Tayada's letters, she's just awfully busy with the social life there, and the girls are all so wonderful, and they've just taken her in. She hardly has time to study. While she's writing that, she's sitting under a tree, and the girls walk by, and they wave at her. They're not mean to her. They just don't include her. Mm. So on on the mother's end, she's writing her saying, honey, don't get so involved in the social life. You neglect your studies. <laughs> so I got to see both sides. I got to see that the mother, Tayata, wanted her mom not to worry about her. She was integrating just fine, but she wasn't. And so she kept to herself a lot, but she enjoyed solitude. I don't think she ever felt slighted. Mm -hmm. She just didn't know. Mm -hmm. She didn't want to intrude. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And she had a lot of pride, too. And so she kept to herself. And so when the teacher said that to her, because she was also very shy at that point about blending with people she didn't know. Right. And so when she stood outside the classroom, she couldn't get the courage to go inside. And the teacher saw her there, if you remember that scene. Mm -hmm. And she actually addressed herself, and, and I copied this verbatim. She actually addressed herself to Tayata that she knew could hear her out in the hall about um, having the courage to do what you do best. I don't remember the, the words exactly, but I remember the idea was, not to let anything stop you. Maybe you it's not do. about what you want to do, but what you were meant to do. There's a place mm -hmm. in the film, it should have been a pivotal point in the movie. She had been touring 
and doing the, you know, Toyota storytelling for a while when um, she had wanted to maintain her storytelling, but it was a personal thing. And then she went home, and she was walking through the woods. Now, you have to remember, the town that she left was thriving. There were people growing things in their yards and everybody coming and going in wagons. And it was very westernized, but it was a very bustling little town. She comes home. She takes a walk through the woods and a storm is gathering. And as she's standing on this place that she could look down on the street where she used to walk home from school. And it was in total poverty. The the land was barren. The houses had fallen down, and it was all under you know government control, and it did not thrive. And it was the first time she saw it like that, and she realized that much depended on her to keep that, not let them die, not not let anybody forget the nobility of her people. And as she thought about it, and she began to cry, and this is from her own story. Uh, her own letters and her diary and things. She, and as she thought about it, the storm broke, and she began to dance, as she had never danced before, with that storm. And that's when her life took a huge change. It became more than something she wanted to do. It was something she knew she had to do. Mm-hmm. And but they, they didn't. They did show the scene, but they didn't. I didn't make it clear that that's where her entire life took a change. Mm-hmm. And, and but but this is what makes that uh, movie so compelling uh, because oh I mean she had so much to tell us and uh, and it came it came across beautifully in the movie. Uh, I would be remiss, however, uh, in not asking you about uh, the lead uh, actress. I can't pronounce her first name. Uh, I never know if I say it right myself. I call her Karyanka, but I I never talked to her. I never met her. I don't know. Karyanka. I don't know if that's how you say it or not. Okay. Very she, strange name. She's um she's had some Hollywood experience, that's for sure. Oh um, yeah. But um yeah. Gary and I were absolutely moved by by the film. We were absolutely moved by it. It was compelling. And we, and the closer something is to historical truth, the more we like it. And and this was a, t- a 10 plus out of a 10 as far as being close to historical truth. You Your research was spot on and, and you brought it beautifully, beautifully into the uh, into the screenplay. But that said, you told me um, earlier that Teata would not have approved of this film. She wouldn't. No, because she didn't like anything that was cutesy. And there were places in there. For instance, there's a scene at the train station where she kisses or he kisses her. Anyway, she didn't like kiss. I remember something that her best friend, Margaret, uh, wrote. They became, uh, they later, after Clive's death, uh, they shared a house in Taos, New Mexico. They were state friends for life. But in something she wrote, she said she had never seen Clyde and Mary Frances uh, do anything the least bit personal. She said, and I think I'm quoting her fairly accurately, she'd been with uh, Mary Frances when uh, when they would go and meet a ship that was coming in because he had been off speaking around the world and they'd been separated six, eight weeks, maybe longer. And she knew how Mary Frances was excited about him coming home. She knew how much he looked, she looked forward to it. He, she adored him. When they met, when he got off the gang plank and they met, she'd say, well, hello. And he'd say, hello. And uh, they would <laughs> go and they would all get in the car and off they would go. She never saw them embrace or kiss because Tayana would never do that in public. And Clyde respected that enormously. Well, uh, it, she went on to say that they all went on a cruise together one time. And she went down to their uh, stateroom to tell them that she was going up to dinner. Did they want to come? And she got close. The door was ajar. 
And they were standing in the middle of the room, embracing. And she didn't disturb because she said she had never seen them do anything, you know, like that. So I knew she wouldn't like that little kiss at the train station. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so I think things like that. And also, they, they did change an attitude. They didn't change what happened. They changed the attitude. When she was told by her mom to take some leftovers to a family down the road that had, I think it was, well, how many children? I forget. A bunch of kids. And Mary Frances said, uh, I quoted her exactly. Something about, I forget how many kids they had, but anyway, uh, double that. And that's how many feet they had. And she said, well, it seems to me they've got umpteen number of feet. They can come get it. <laughs> you know, if you're going to give it to them, at least they, I'm not going to take it to them. <laughs> and so her mother said, what she was always saying is, Mary Frances. Take it to them and watch the attitude. <laughs> so she went storming off with this basket that she bitterly resented taking down the road to these people. <laughs> Who could come and at least pick it up? That's and funny. so when she got there, she talked about how there was this kid in the yard with a runny nose and another one on the porch. I think the mother was out hanging up clothes, is how I recall it really happening. They have her in the house and she comes to the door. The attitude in the scene was different. She went, she said, Mama, Mama brought, I uh, want you to have these. Well, there was uh, green beans. And the woman t- <laughs> lifted up the tea towel, looked in there, and she said, oh, green beans. Does it have pork in it? And that made me <laughs> so mad. <laughs> what do you care if it's got pork in it? It's got <laughs> green beans, and I brought them to you. Anyway, she is so indignant. She said, I don't know, mine didn't. And she storms off. Uh, and then on her, when she goes back, then she sees that confrontation between the old white man, uh, uh, I mean, the, the white man that shoots the the older Indian man. That's the first confrontation she'd ever seen in her life, and she raced all the way back home and was hysterical telling her parents about it. But that attitude, uh, that's Tayana. Mm-hmm. That is the real Tayana. You know, I'm glad for you to have these leftovers. I'm I'm delighted we're going to give them to you. But dang it, at least come get them. And don't ask me that pork. And it'd be glad you got the green beans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well. so I, I'm sorry. They, they, they have her playing bang, bang, or shoot it up with one of his kids on the porch. I went, oh, no, 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 not in a million years. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. Not do that. <laughs> That's funny. Golly. We got we've got a real person rather than a saint that uh, this movie is about. <laughs> oh dear. Oh well, gosh. Well, but I don't mean to criticize because again, Paul had to answer to people. Paul had to answer to the Indian Nation and the studio. And the studio was, uh, you know, it belongs to the nation. It's fabulous. They got a fabulous facility. Mm-hmm. Um. He had to bring the professional Hollywood element to it, so he brought in the people who who could turn it into the film they wanted it to be. But they were they followed every step of the way and made sure it told the story they wanted told. And um, thank goodness, it didn't take a Hollywood spin. It just took a couple of places where, we're, like with an emery board, they just shaved off some of the sharper corners. Mm-hmm. <laughs> there you go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, folks, um, the movie we're talking about is Teyada. It's playing now on Netflix. We highly recommend that you check it out. It's a solid piece of entertainment. And we've been talking to the person who is the screenwriter and uh, story developer. Her name is... Esther Luttrell, and Esther, your compelling screenplay gives a new voice to the songs and stories of Teyada. And, you know, these are the stories and and songs that um, I think she wanted us to hear. And and we're also also tickled to learn about the pork and the green beans and not wanting to deliver (laughs) the vittles down the road. I mean, that's part of it, too. (laughs) <laughs> Thank what, you so much. I, <laughs> Go well, ahead. May I tell? Wait, may I tell just one other little thing? Ye- that absolutely. I'd like sure, to absolutely. Oh, I, okay. When it when 
I'm asked to go out and talk, and we have a Q&A afterwards, you know, and I'm talking to the audience. Here in Topeka, they had a screening, and when it was over, um, I was answering questions and telling them the stories. And somebody in the back of the room stood up and said, uh, I have someone back here who has something she'd like to say. And I said, oh, of course. And I thought she would just stand up and say it. But here comes this little girl, maybe eight or nine years old, coming down the aisle. And she comes straight to the front of the room and stands in front of me, turns around with her shoulders squared and says, I am Dakota. And everybody was silent at first. And then they broke into applause. And she didn't smile. She walked right back to where she had been, and she sat down. And it took me a moment to realize, and then later it was confirmed. She had been bullied a bit at school because of her Indian heritage. Uh And I take it that that movie, she sat there through that screening. And as you know, Tayata says throughout the movie, as she gets up on a stage, I am Tayata. I am Chickasaw. And she said it says it with such quiet conviction and pride that this little girl said, I can be proud of being a Dakota. I said later, after it was all over and I'm going home with friends, and I said, you know, if not one other thing comes yep. of making that movie, that was worth everything. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, yeah, yeah. That is the kind of feedback you absolutely will treasure not not yeah. somebody uh, shooting off the cuff and saying uh, this and that's inaccurate this is the kind of feedback that really counts yes yes and you know Tayata, i think uh, from what i hear from mail i've gotten and things i've read i think she was an inspiration to not just women, but to anybody who follows what they what they know in their heart, they should do. Mm-hmm. Absolutely, and everybody is somebody okay. of worth. Yeah, I, I promise you, I, I will let you sign off now. <laughs> <laughs> well, Esther, it's and been a real so treat having you here with us this evening. Absolutely, oh, we, we can't treat. thank you enough. And so, with that, I'm going to say that. We've had Esther on our program, and I'm Richard. And I'm Gary. And uh, we hope that you will join us again for more incredible stories.